Hey guys, so I just wanted to come on here and do a first impressions review of the Haymaker Lion Punch Forge and Pepe Tools saw. I know a lot of you have probably seen this circulating throughout the metalsmith communities. I just wanted to do a quick review or first impressions on my thoughts because I've had the saw for about 30 days. I did pre-order this at $75. It did go up to $85 and I think that's still at a promotional pricing and eventually I think it's supposed to be $99 as it says on the website. So if you're interested, um, you could save a little bit of money before the promotional pricing ends. I did not reach out to Pepe Tools to confirm about um, if it's ever going up, but it does say it's on sale from $99 to $85 still. Um, I bought it on June 11th, I believe, and it came on July 2nd. Um, it was still in production, I believe, or just at the end of production. Uh, by that point, it took only two days to ship from Oklahoma, which is where they are based out of. And I just wanted to get straight into it. I will be comparing this to other saws that I own, as well as going over um, just some of the specs from the website, along with I had a live chat with Chris, which is the creator of the saw. So I just want to kind of compile all that information for you guys. Please um, subscribe, like the video, and let me know what else you guys would like to see on my channel. So when it ships, it's going to come in this box, and I don't remember how exactly they packed it, but just for argument's sake, it's nicely packed. It has this really nice padding. So I chose the red color. It comes in four colors, which are blue, gold, black, and red. I absolutely adore red. It's my favorite color. That's why I chose this one. A couple things. So when I spoke with Chris, I had some questions about the saw frame. I had some concerns and um, we did some troubleshooting, which was really great. And he was able to tell me a little bit of his backstory, which he is a blacksmith. He's also a jeweler. He's made swords and blades and all sorts of stuff. So it's nice to know that someone who is creating the tool is using the tool. They kind of understand what we are looking for in a saw, what we um, possibly are missing from saws that are out on the market already. And I think that is always a nice way to bring design and innovation to uh, the table. Now, I asked about these four little holes, I said, is there any significance? And one of the biggest components to this saw is the balancing aspect. I think a lot of us have seen um, all the photos and videos of people balancing the saw in their hand. And it is pretty incredible. Um, balance was one of the most important things he had told me with de the design of the saw. So I think that's really interesting. And I think it's something that speaks a lot about the design elements that went into this because it is perfectly balanced. It's weighing in at seven ounces, which is really light. I mean, I could ship a jewelry package. If I have a few things in there, that could be more than seven ounces. Um, that's actually the same weight too as the new concept saw. And that was just accidental, but if that's like a little fun, just FYI fact. Um, so it is just incredibly light. Now, the other saws that I do own, and I've talked a lot about the Green Line saw in the past, um, is one of these kind of cheapy like German um, saws, which some people do their whole entire career. You could, you know, you could use this and you can get the job done. I happen to hate that saw, but that's just me. I bought the economy saw from Rio Grande, I believe, many years ago. And honestly, I love that. It got me through many, many years until these came out. So I originally got the version one. This is version two. The reason that it was the green uh, handle was this was the prototype for version two that um, Green Lion BJ sent me, which I was totally in love with because there was a few upgrades that it made from one to two. I think, I believe you can only get version two now anyways. This is a $55 saw frame. If you are not in the market to spend $75, $85 on a saw frame, this is an excellent choice. Um, I have loved this for years. It has gotten me through countless projects that I'm proud of making and I'm sure many other makers are. It's at a great price point, but there are differences with the saws. There are a few things I like better about this saw. There's a few things I like better about this saw. They both get the job done. So it depends on really, I would say, your budget, okay? I think that's really what it boils down to. This saw is obviously much more 
heavy in the frame. Um, it's not balanced by any means. And it's not something I ever noticed really because I was so used to using this until I used a saw like this that was really balanced and light. Um, it is a little bit clunkier in the handle, but I always really enjoyed it. It was hard for me to transition to this to this. Originally I said, man, this is kind of a small handle, but now that I'm getting acclimated to using this one, um, I do quite like it. But overall, great saw. So one of the main reasons, I was in the market for a new saw before I even knew about this. I was going to buy a new concept saw. They run anywhere from 60 at the cheapest to around 225 depending on how fancy you want to get with the titanium frames and whatnot. Um, I kept not pulling the trigger though with buying one because I read so many mixed reviews and for the price of some of them, I didn't know if I really wanted to go with that. And that's when I saw this bad boy on pre-order. So this again, um, I do love it, but I'm really enjoying the transition into this saw frame as of now. So yeah, those are my overall kind of just quick thoughts about the other frames that I have owned. And so to move back to this saw, Another thing that is nice that it's made in the USA, if you guys are familiar with Pepe Tools, they do some incredible um, tool innovations. They have come to the market with a lot of really helpful different pieces that you know metalsmiths use on a daily basis. Another thing that's really great about this particular saw is that it has a five inch throat, so you got a lot of room here to work with. You don't have to worry about repositioning your saw constantly, uh, taking off metal so you can accommodate your sheet, um, there's a lot of room here. This one is about a four inch uh, throat, so you see get a whole extra inch, and let me tell you, I feel that a whole extra inch can do you wonders. When I had my live chat with Chris, I asked him obviously a bunch of questions, just, you know, we're ta personal, personally talking, and then, you know, just talking about design concepts, and I believe that he said in November 2019, was when they started to come up with having this saw being created. And obviously it takes a little time for production to get started and to have different versions and approvals happen until you get to the final stage of having the manufacturing process actually take place. So um, it's pretty incredible because when you work within, you know, they don't have to go to factories um, internationally, they get to work right here with uh, Pepe Tools. So it was able to go to market pretty quick if you think about it from November. But another great thing about the frame is it's made out of aluminum alloy and that's giving it its durability, the hardness and that weight and balance that we all really like about this frame. The knobs that you see right here that load the blade, one, I like that they match the color of the saw frame, but also these are an industrial grade material. They're not just like a plastic that's cheap and and you know, because I asked, I said, what made you go with this particular material? And he gave me a little bit of a crash course on that as well, saying just, you know, because I was like, are they plastic? And he's like, not, not, they're not plastic. That's an industrial um, grade material that is built to last for a long period of time. So the one problem that I had with this saw, and I talked to him about, this is why we had the live chat, was because I had an issue with blade slippage, and I'm not the only person that has this. I wanted to bring up the issue because I want to solve the issue. You know, you spend money on a tool, you want it to work, you want it to not have any issues. And I was finding that the blade, I would load the blade, and listen, I've loaded plenty of saw blades in my life. While it's very easy to load the blade, I found that it was like, you know, if you were cutting, it would slip. And like, you know, all of a sudden you'd be cutting and it wouldn't break. It would just slip out of this area where you, um, between the steel frame and the steel little nubs. So what he had suggested, and this is really more or less something that m probably could be fixed, I'm sure, in the second round of them creating the saw was to create um, some texture. Because these are made so smooth, sorry. I don't know if you can see that. Because these are made to be polished and smooth, you have to remember, you know, Pepe Tools makes tools to be completely finished the way like you would want a glossy piece of metal. Um, these are made in the same regards. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is, is it doesn't create enough grip for the saw blade to stay. So he suggested to take a file and create some grooves so that this way it has a little bit of texture so that the saw blade can be... Um, have the ability to be grabbed. So I did that and that did help. I still experience some slippage, but as I'm using the saw 
and I'm creating, you know, I'll go back and I'll sometimes file it just a little bit more. I'm, I'm seeing I'm having that problem less and less. So I do want to make you guys aware of that. That might be something that will be addressed in the future. And I know he's also addressed that as well. So that hack definitely helped that issue. And that is really the only negative thing I have to say about this saw. Um, so just be mindful when you're purchasing um, that if you experience that issue, um, one, you can always reach out to him. He's always available um, in his direct messages or through email, I'm sure. And if um, you do the file trick, that should do the trick. So um, overall, I really like this. Um, I think it's a great saw. If you're looking to spend a little bit more than the $55 saw that we talked about from Green Lion, or if you are interested just in trying a new tool, maybe you're a tool junkie, I'm going to give this a solid four stars. I think it's an excellent saw. The only thing that I really want to see improved is these little areas over here, which I made clear to Chris that I would be talking about that in my video. So um, if you have any questions, if you already have the saw, please comment below what you're liking about it. And um, I just want to have an open dialogue about different things that we use that can help us better achieve better results and making our lives easier, making tools that make us happy. And also um, something like this with the colors um, to be able to pick what you like. I think it's just one other thing that, you know, really makes us able to feel it's personalized. So, and that's something that might be happening too in the future. Not sure, but Chris did mention there could maybe be some personalization um, in what capacity. I'm not really 100% sure, but I just want to throw it out there. So this is my overall thoughts on the Haymaker saw, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye. Okay, so I just wanted to choose like a really simple shape to show you guys um but something that has a bit of an edge to it um i'm gonna do this starfish so i'm just gonna apply a little bit of glue right there i'll just pop this on here and if you're new to jewelry making just make sure the teeth are going um this way going down towards the handle of the frame so you get an accurate um, cut. So I'm just sticking the blade in all the way down, twisting. I mean, it's like any other saw frame if you're familiar with with um, using a saw. Uh, you can use your um, shoulder area here to apply some pressure to get that nice tension, but I just like to just hold the frame a little bit and then look for that nice ping and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna lube my blade up and then we can go for it. And you're gonna see that this saw moves just ever so gentle, making it really nice and comfortable. It just feels like the saw is doing all the work. I'm not applying much pressure at all. Just following the guidelines over here. I'm able to make sharp turns easily. I'm telling you, the weight of the saw is really what makes this saw so special. I do know, as we uh, said before, the new concept saws are quite light as well. I'm just not used to such a um, well-balanced saw. And again, it took me a couple of... Um, it took me a couple of, uh, you know, weeks to really acclimate just because it's new, you know, it's like anything. If you have ever taken a course of, in, for jewelry making and you had to use somebody else's bench, it feels quite odd, you know, the first couple times you're making a piece at that bench because you're used to even just hand placement or elbow placement. Um, so you got to give tools a little bit of time. That's why I did not do a first impressions, like truly like out of the box review, because I'm not sure if I would have known how much I liked it. You know, I want to know a little bit more about something before I, I make a video. You know, unless it was like an unboxing, that would have been different. All right, so here we go. There we have it. A nice little starfish. I'll have to put this aside for another day. I'll use it for something, I'm sure. But as you can see, really simple, really easy. Um, just very comfortable overall. 
when you are using it. So that was my little demo. I hope that you guys um, liked it and I hope it helped you if you are trying to make any decisions.